In the recent video, we've seen that energy comes in discrete packets and that light behaves like a particle and a wave. This is known as wave particle duality. We also saw matter itself, including electrons, exhibit wave particle duality. So instead of electrons simply orbiting the nucleus in a circular fashion, they orbit in this standing wave pattern and with greater wavelengths come higher energy levels. Recognizing this wave-like behavior in electrons was a game changer. It led scientists on a quest to mathematically model these properties. So enter Erwin Schrödinger, a key figure who formulated what we know as the Schrödinger equation. This equation is essentially the F equals MA of quantum mechanics. So while F equals MA lets us predict things like velocity of a falling ball, the Schrödinger equation instead determines things like energy levels and the probability of an electron's location. Now let's decode this equation, focusing on the time independent form. It introduces us to this trident looking thing called psi, which is the wave function. It tells us where the electron is in a given volume of space, but it isn't a precise GPS for locating electrons Instead, it's more like a probability guide suggesting where electrons are likely to be found. It's important to remember Heisenberg's uncertainty principle here that tells us we can't know an electron's exact momentum and position simultaneously. So we can't pinpoint the exact location, but we can map out the probabilities using the squared wave function. I've created an analogy to help further understand this. Imagine shooting arrows at a target. There's an 80% chance you'll miss, a 15% chance of hitting the blue, and a 5% chance of hitting the red. Now let's say you turn the lights off and shoot the arrow. You might know the odds of hitting different sections, but until you turn the lights on, you don't know exactly where your arrow is. That's where the wave function comes in offering a statistical view of where the arrow or electron might be. But there's a twist in quantum mechanics. The electron, much like the arrow, exists in a state of superposition, meaning it's in all possible locations until we turn the lights back on and collapse it into one state. This is like Schrodinger's cat in a box, which is both dead and alive until you open the box and it chooses a state. So from an atomic standpoint, imagine an electron having a position probability across the entire volume of a sphere surrounding the nucleus. And due to it having a superposition, the electron location isn't a single point, but rather is spread out over the entire sphere, embodying all possible points simultaneously. And this is how we get orbitals. So not knowing the electron's exact location allows it to be spread out in a distribution like a wave. Different types of waves represent different probabilities of where it's likely to be, hence the term wave function. It essentially describes the wave shape of the probability distribution of the electron. And if you solve the equation in three dimensions, you will get the shape of an orbital. Now let's talk about the E in the equation. This represents the energy of the electron. Unlike the continuous energy spectrum we experience daily, quantum mechanics energy is quantized into specific levels. Remember Einstein's equation, E equals HF, where H is Planck's constant and F is frequency. We can use a bunch of quantized quantities from the Schrodinger equation to find the energy. So energy in a system, or E, is a combination of kinetic and potential energy. Sometimes potential energy is represented as this V. So if this term here is the potential energy, then the other term is the kinetic energy. Solving for both kinetic and potential energy allows us to determine the energy levels. So what are some solutions to the Schrodinger equation? It can be solved exactly for simple systems like hydrogen or hydrogen-like ions, which consist of one 
electron and a nucleus. For more complex systems, approximate solutions are used. The equation appears in different forms depending on the dimensions involved. So for one dimensional motion, the equation is simplified like so. But in reality, electrons move in three dimensional space, making the equation more complex and often expressed in spherical coordinates. So to summarize, Solutions to the Schrodinger equation describe the behavior and probable location of an electron within an atomic orbital. They reveal the quantized energy levels of electrons. In essence, understanding and solving this equation allows us to predict the energy levels, orbital shapes, and behavior of electrons in atoms, forming the basis for much of modern chemistry and physics. And that brings us to the end of this video. If anything was confusing, please feel free to leave a comment. Thank you for watching. Until next time.